two years, um, leading to a better result than D1, which is one year. And these data will be presented. This is the HERA trial, the famous HERA trial, which, as you know, had, uh, had included one and the other question. And the uh, results of the two years was one year uh, from the HERA trial will be presented by Dr. Richard Gelber from the Dana Farber in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you. Yes, thank you. If, if I may take the liberty of uh, clarifying an issue that just arose. This, these two studies, FAR and the HERA study, appear to bracket one year of treatment, one testing shorter and one testing longer. But in reality, they are fundamentally different trials. You'll see that the HERA trial is now at eight years of median follow-up. Those are the data that will be reported. The FAR trial is at three and a half years of median follow-up. And you've already seen that the data that were handed out have been updated. And if you look at the disease-free survival curve that was presented, it appears to come together in the end. This is not statistically solid. However, further update of FAR is absolutely required for, I would say, at least another year before any conclusion that six months is inferior goes out to the public. Furthermore, if that message is communicated, the ongoing trials that were in the last bullet point that Dr. Pivot mentioned are likely to be stopped. And if those ongoing trials are stopped, we will never learn which patients might do just as well with six months of therapy and avoid the excess cardiotoxicity that they will be exposed to. So this kind of message is very difficult to communicate I'm really hoping that you can do so. And now I'll show you the results of two versus one. I'm very pleased to present these on behalf of the Breast International Group, uh, which conducted this uh, trial uh, with the Roche as the corporate sponsor. It was to have been presented by Aaron Goldhirsch, my colleague for 35 years. Unfortunately, for health reasons, he could not be here. So I am substituting. The HER trial was one of the pivotal trials that was useful for the registration of trastuzumab one year duration versus no trastuzumab as seen in the curve here. In addition, the HERA trial is the only trial evaluating a longer duration, two years versus one year of trastuzumab. In the presentation I'll make later this afternoon, I'll talk about two analyses. The first is the first report of one year versus two years in what's called a landmark analysis, considering only patients who were alive and disease-free for at least one year. And then from that point of divergence, we evaluated what did the additional year of trastuzumab add to the primary efficacy endpoint disease-free survival. The second analysis I'll show is an eight-year median follow-up update of the one year versus observation, no trastuzumab, which is now available to us. So these will appear in the next two slides. The first, one, uh, two versus one. The second, one versus nothing. So here are the results at eight years median follow-up. You can see the guarantee time for the landmark in the first part and the curves diverging where the two-year arm is at the top and the one-year arm represents the session of treatment after one year and that's below. These results are not statistically significantly different. The number of events in the two arms are exactly the same. About 76% of the patients who were alive and well at one year remain alive and disease-free seven years after divergence, eight years after randomization. I also call your attention to the early part of the curve a part that might be relevant for the FAR data maturity. And there is a slight non-statistically significant separation at that point in the curve, which disappears over time. Now the update of the one year versus observation. Previously, we reported the top three bars for disease-free survival, showing an apparent attenuation of the trastuzumab effect for one year. So I draw your attention to the top three bars reported at one year median follow-up, two year median follow-up, 
and, and four-year median follow-up. But in the parentheses, you see the percent of time that patients spent after crossover to trastuzumab in the observation group. When the results were released in 2005, our study group made a specific effort to offer trastuzumab to all the patients who had been enrolled in the study and had been assigned observation. As a result, 50% of those patients actually received trastuzumab between six months and about 36 months of entry into the trial. And the percentage of time spent following the introduction of trastuzumab is shown in those parentheses. None when we first reported, 4% when we reported uh, the second time, 33%, and now with the updated eight years, 50% of the time they've spent, uh, despite assigned observation, was spent after receiving trastuzumab. Despite that, the updated result, the new one at the bottom, shows a 24% reduction of the risk of a recurrence if you were assigned trastuzumab compared with observation. And we know that this estimate of 24% is an underestimate of the effect of the treatment because over half the patients actually receive trastuzumab later on. Disease-free survival is shown at the top. Overall survival is shown at the bottom. And when we published in 2011, there was concern that the overall survival benefit had been disappearing, 0.85. But today, I'm happy to report that the overall survival advantage for trastuzumab compared with observation is sustained, it's robust, and it's long-term. So our conclusions are as follows. No evidence of long-term benefit of two years compared with one year when administered as sequential treatment following chemotherapy. This was the program in HERA after finishing all chemotherapy. Other studies give concurrent trastuzumab. HERA results at eight years show sustained and statistically significant disease-free survival and overall survival benefit for the one year versus observation in intention to treat analyses despite the selective crossover. And one year of trastuzumab remains the standard of care as part of an adjuvant therapy for patients with HER2 positive early breast cancer. Thank you.